Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Ed Sports Network. We got another interview for you guys today. We got Martins Igbanu of Tulsa Men's Basketball. Martins, thanks so much for joining us here on the site. Yeah, thank you for having me today. No problem at all. We're looking forward to hearing what you have to say. I know you got a very interesting path to the NCAA, a very interesting story here. Great career at Tulsa. I know you just finished up your senior season, so we're looking forward to getting into that with you. First question for you here. You moved from Nigeria to the United States about eight years ago now. Haven't seen your family since then. I would imagine that's a very tough move to make. And and what was it like making that move from Nigeria to the U.S.? Um, it's um, just like you said, it's a very tough move to make. But mm -hmm. it was something I wanted to do because I knew it was going to set me up later for the things I wanted to do in life. And mm -hmm. Which is get um, the very best education I could get possibly, and also play basketball at the highest level I could possibly play. So um, around the time that was happening, I had just turned 15, and um, my mom really didn't want me to go. But after talking with her and everything, she finally let me go. And um, you know, I came here by myself. I went to a high school in Atlanta. Uh, I was there for four years, graduated, and then. Uh, uh, finally chose to come to the University of Tulsa. Yeah, and I mean, as you mentioned, you wanted to go play basketball, have a great education. You got just that at your high school down in Georgia. And how does a school like that get you ready for D1 basketball at Tulsa in such a good conference like the American? And I know as a senior, you led your team to 28-5. and five. So how did your high school kind of set you up to succeed at that next level? I know you wanted to come over here, play basketball, yeah. and, and you obviously did get that chance. Yeah. Yeah, um, my high school set me up in the way. I would say um, the perspective where my high school set me up was from a winning standard and um, mm -hmm. also um, being tough. And that was who my high school coach was. You know, he um, he made sure all his players were tough and they were in shape. They were physically able to guard and all that. So. But from a, um, you know, making that transition to college, you know, I had to learn how to play the post because I played a different position in high school. I played in the pyramid in high school. Mm -hmm. so I had to learn how to play the post in um in college and everything. So it was kind of like almost starting over, but uh, just due to the constant work and which was something my high school so prepared me for. So it was a. Uh, you know, being able to work. And that was something we did. You know, we walked in the mornings before school, mm -hmm. went to school all day, walked after school, practice and all that, and spent all summer in the gym. So I think that kind of, like, created the timeline for um, for me and what college was going to look like, which kind of made the transition to college. And uh, the, co the transition to college part was hard, but mm -hmm. also putting in the constant work, I would say, made it a little easier and made things get slower. Instead of because how fast, considering how fast the game goes, mm -hmm. so I think high school that was how like my high school set me up for college. Yeah, I mean you got to Tulsa, looked really good as a freshman in your freshman season, and each year you just kind of improved and improved and improved. Senior season, you were scoring the most points per game that you've scored in your career at Tulsa. So how did you kind of see yourself grow in your role and become the player that you were by the end of your senior season? Um, with that um that took time. Like you said, it was uh, it was just a matter of being able to put your head down and just mm -hmm. work because um just like a show that got better every year, I also got better during every season. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's kind of like it's kind of funny how that works too because. That happened every single year, and I would start the year of struggling, and then just towards the middle of the year and stuff like that, get better throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And which was something I liked about my game because you know it showed me that just the more you work, the, the better you you get. And that was something my coach also preached, and you know he believes in hard work, and I believe in hard work, and. You know, I really, I think what I really did was just put the work in, and I, I was fortunate enough to have uh, coaches around me mm -hmm. who were willing to work with me at any time. We had managers that were willing to work with me at any time. Um, also, having um, teammates, also that you know they were excited about getting into the gym. I think that kind of made it easier too. Yeah, I mean, 
Your hard work definitely paid off. There's no doubt about that. You got a chance to participate in the Basketball Hall of Fame showcase uh, your junior season. And you were actually named MVP in that game. It was against Dayton. So I got to ask, what was it like to experience a game like that where you're playing um, in the location where all basketball players want to end up someday? Basketball Hall of Fame. You put on a show, have a great game. You're named MVP. What's that experience like? Um, that's a, I mean, that's an unbelievable experience for me because, mm -hmm. I mean, coming from where I come from, you know, uh, that's not something you dream or think of. So mm -hmm. to be able to experience that, you know, kind of, um, you know, it also says a lot about the, the good works of God because, uh, all that, all that right there was faith and, you know, this is not something I ever saw coming, but mm -hmm. to be able to play in that game, especially considering the circumstances leading up to that game and everything, and finishing up with uh, as the MVP and also finishing with a win against a very good Dayton team. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you saw how good that Dayton team was the year after that, also, which was pretty much the same guy. So, yep. um, yeah, I think uh, it, it was. Uh, it says a lot about uh, Thompson basketball for us, but also about uh, how um, good that has been in my life. Yeah, I mean, you guys have put together some great seasons in your time at Tulsa, and your MVP award in that showcase, not the only award you've won, last season, or this past season here, Sixth Man of the Year award in the American Athletic Conference, and you also led your team in points and field goal percentage, as we talked a little bit about earlier. Now, that six-man role, that was a little bit of a different role for you. Uh, you had started the majority of your time at Tulsa, but you fit that role perfectly. Got six-man of the year. How would you kind of make the adjustment to go from being a starter to coming off the bench and being a great player off the bench so good that you won that six-man of the year award? Uh, I think uh, when I look back at the season and you know look back at where I was and when that transition happened and everything, mm -hmm. uh, I think what really made that those things was three things for me. And it was trust, faith, and hard work. Because, mm -hmm. and when I say that, uh, in the sense that you know, when I chose Tulsa, when I chose to play for Tulsa, the real the main big thing for me was to play for Coach Hate, and mm -hmm. it was all about because of the person who he was, and I was able to read him well more than any other coach I had uh, met. So, you know, yeah, I knew exactly what I was getting into by choosing to play for him and everything. And he was a coach that knew how to get the best out of every single player. He knows how to reach them. And I was uh, I was one of the guys that coach never really let slip in mm -hmm. any way. Not even on the slightest bit. I don't think coach ever let me slip on anything. So, you know, and, and I appreciate that coaching because, you know, it kind of prepared me for life and everything, too, because all that did for me was to make me trust Coach Hate mm -hmm. to the court where, you know, he can come up to me and tell me, you know, after starting for three and a half years, I want you to come off the bench for before um, conference play your mm -hmm. last year. So you know, you know, when the coach tells you that, I don't think a lot of guys will react to that the right way. But for me, it was all about I trust him, and I know he wants the best for me and the team, and he's going to do the right thing. So I and I immediately took it. I didn't say anything about it. I did not apologize about it. I didn't feel any certain way about it. And and the fate comes in the in the part where you know I believe God has a plan for me also too. So if that was a little, I didn't even look at it. I said, the detail. I just looked at it as something that was going to help me, but I didn't know it at that point. And just the hard work in the sense that now I was coming up the bench, you know, that made that gave me extra time and stuff to go harder in stuff in practice and on game days, uh, warm ups and all that stuff. Because uh, for me, I think it was more about getting that little rest before the game started and mm -hmm. getting right into the game. I don't know if that was what made the difference, but. I knew coach knew what he was doing and he made the right call and you could see how quick our season changed and my season changed with me coming up the bench. Mm -hmm. And I liked it too. I, I mean, yeah. we talked about it and we decided I didn't wanna I didn't wanna start anymore. I wanted to come off the bench for the rest of the year. Yeah, I mean you certainly had, as you just mentioned, an absolutely great attitude towards that change and it really showed on the floor. I mean, 
Going back here, February 9th against UCF, you come off the bench, you score 30 points on 12 of 16 shooting. I'm not great at math, but I, I know that's 75%. I know 75% is unbelievable. <laughs> and I don't know if you know this, Martins, but coming off the bench, scoring 30 points, not every guy can do that. What is the key to finding a rhythm off the bench like that? Some guys can get hot when they start, but it's very rare to just come off the bench, get that hot, find your groove. But how did you do that? Uh, I think um, that um, that says a lot about my teammates and mm -hmm. our coaching staff. Because uh, uh, with me coming off the bench, you know, that gave guys a little space to, um, you know, start the game and, you know, get going. And for me, because of the role I played on this team and not just being a leader, but being somebody who uh, one thing I prided myself in was being connected to all my brothers um, mm -hmm. personally. I made sure I had a one-way connect, uh, two-way connection, I would say, with each person on the team and on the staff. I had a relationship with everybody. So I think that kind of helped our camaraderie on the court to the sense where, you know, they could start the game and I could come in the game and, they immediately know where to find me and how to find me and, you know, just gelling together. And also just for me waiting and, you know, waiting for the game to come to me and not forcing anything. Mm -hmm. You know, all of that plays into it. But all of that also, you know, goes back to time and, you know, the chemistry. Because one thing we did this year a lot as a team was we played a lot of pickup together mm -hmm. before the season started because we wanted to learn how to play with each other. So, me making that move to the bench, you know, I think uh, it gave guys a little space, but also knowing that when I come in the game, they knew they had an extra weapon coming off the bench and how to play with and all that. And so you spent four years at Tulsa. You mentioned how your teammates, your coaching staff have become like brothers, like family to you. And obviously moving from Nigeria, tough transition, but you kind of found the second home at Tulsa. So... What did you take away from your career at Tulsa, not only from a basketball standpoint, but also from a life standpoint? Um, I learned, you know, I, I learned a lot of things while I was here, man. You know, mm -hmm. I, I learned more about God. You know, I I learned to be humble and, you know, to keep faith. And I learned to love people and respect them, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but more importantly, also, I learned how far and how rich character or how wealthy one can be off of um, having good character and also learning the importance of servanthood and the importance of serving people and serving a bigger purpose than yourself. Uh, but more also, especially learning that I learned this from Coach A was to be uh, thankful, you know, just to be thankful all the time because uh, we tend to feel a certain, you know, we tend to feel a certain way when we don't have the things we want, but we don't also see how blessed we are sometimes. So mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing right there would be learning um, how to be thankful all the time. And that's one thing I definitely learned from you. Well, Martins, you had an unbelievable career at Tulsa. And I think beyond basketball, I think you have a great outlook on life, great attitude. And I think that's definitely going to serve you well. Um, it definitely served you well at Tulsa. Congrats on a great career there. I know you just finished up your senior season. Obviously not the ending that most of us expected going into the year, but just like to congratulate you on a great four years there. Um, a ton of accolades and accomplishments. And uh, you certainly were uh, just a great basketball player and great person too. I mean, great outlook, great attitude. And thank you so much for joining us on Ed Sports Network today. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. No problem at all, Martins. We'd love to have you on again. Martin Zigbanu, we'll put his Twitter down below if you want to follow him to check out what he's up to. We'll also put a link to Tulsa Men's Basketball, their page. You can check up there for news and updates whenever you want. This has been another interview for Edge Sports Network. This is Nick signing off, and we'll see you guys next time.